Paul Dietzel has installed tremendous spirit into the Army football machine with his three-team system of the regulars, the GO team, and the Chinese bandits. Rip Engel's team moves with power, size, speed, and All-American candidate number 46, Roger Kaufman. Army has the ball as we pick up the first quarter action. Ken Waldrop tries a half-back pass play, but his efforts go in vain as Pete Lisk picks off the misguided aerial and starts back the other way. Lisk receives plenty of help before he's finally knocked down by Joe Blackgrove at midfield. Dietzel's Chinese bandits stop the Nittany Lions charge, so Ron Coates chalks up three for Penn State with a 32-yard boot, and the field goal gives favored State a 3 to nothing lead. Still in the first quarter, Army moves with Art Lewis directing the Army attack. John Seymour has the ball and plenty of speed as he turns up the turf for 32 yards. Dick Anderson finally makes the stop on the 19, but Army's go team was almost gone on that play. Seymour again tests the Penn State forward wall, but this time Terry Monahan infiltrates the enemy's position, and the Army halfback is buried under a lion-sized avalanche. Army's finally stopped, but not before Dick Haight slams home a 35-yard field goal of the same variety that beat Penn State in a big upset last season. It's a new game at 3-3, and that's the way it stands at halftime. The cadets whoop it up, knowing that their brave old Army team is capable of knocking off third-ranked Penn State. Pete Lisk opens up the third quarter for State by flipping a short pass to Junior Powell, who puts the ball deep in Army territory. Lisk drops back and looks for the home run punch, but can't find a place to unload it. He does the next best thing by taking off for 11 yards, and it's goal to go, Penn State. This time, Lisk finds his receiver, but Dick Anderson can't hang on to the ball, and what looked like a sure touchdown winds up as an incompleted pass. Penn State is pushed back to the seven where Ron Coates tries a field goal, but Alan Scott blocks it and Tom Cunningham recovers for Army. The underdogs from West Point continue to dominate the action as the Corps of Cadets expresses its approval. Army takes over, determined to move that football. John Seymour has the right idea as he weaves in and out of the line secondary for 21 yards before Bernie Sable can stop him. Dick Peterson takes the handoff from Cammy Lewis and picks up seven yards. It's not enough as the big Nittany line stops this drive and State has the football. While the Chinese bandits cause havoc up front, State's Ron Coates goes overhead with a completion to Frank Hershey and the Lions have a first down. Coates puts on a beautiful bit of deception on this play, and Bill Bowes teams up for quite a catch. Penn State fans and cheerleaders come to life, but not for long, because a penalty nullifies this play. Pete Lisk springs Roger Kaufman loose, and Roger's a Dodger who makes it to the seven-yard line. That's as far as they can go, so State elects to try for the field goal. It's good this time, so the Pennsylvanians take over the lead in this tight defensive battle, 6-3, to three, with a quarter to play. In the final period, Dave Hayes breaks loose, and it looks as if the stronger Lions might be ready to put this game into the cooler. Junior Powell comes off the wing to pick up more yardage, and he keeps that clock running. But Army's Chinese bandits change the complexion of the situation by forcing State to fumble. The cadets Tom Kearns recovers on State's 19, and Army has a big break. Hard Lewis is called on to do the job that tells the tale and he provides the sellout crowd of 31,000 with a storybook finish. His pass to Dick Peterson spells the difference between victory and defeat. 
Paul Dietzel's fired up Army team hangs on for a stunning 9 to 6 upset over one of the nation's best, the Nittany Lions of Penn State. In what is always one of the East's big games, Penn State meets the Orangemen of Syracuse. Penn State coach Rip Engel is one of the country's top football minds. He has halfback Roger Kaufman, number 46, set for a big day to put the Nittany Lions back on the winning track. Ben Schwartzwalder has a young team that's just starting to gel. And John Mackey, number 88, is one of Syracuse's veteran stars who's aiming for an orange upset. A sellout crowd is packed into Beaver Stadium as Syracuse drives against the Nittany Lions in the first quarter. Fullback Bill Schoonover goes over right guard but loses the ball. Penn State's Pete Lisk recovers in midair to give the Lions the ball on the Syracuse 43. Flanker Roger Kaufman slips through a gaping hole on the right side and blazes 32 yards to the end zone for the game's first score. Penn State leads the Orange seven to nothing. Syracuse quarterback Wally Maley tries to get those points back in a hurry with a long pass intended for Mike Kiske, but his wayward wobbler is hijacked by Penn State's Frank Hershey, who returns 12 yards. The Lions are threatening again on the Orange 41. With third and one, state quarterback Pete Lisk fakes the line buck and passes to Roger Kaufman. Roger is alone behind the deceived Syracuse secondary, and it's another 32-yard touchdown. Suddenly, State leads 14 to nothing with only four minutes gone in the ball game. The Orangemen fight back in the second quarter. Maley rolls left and flips right on target to his strong side end, Dick Bowman, for 16 yards. Using the Syracuse version of the scissors play, Bill Hunter slants over left guard for eight yards. On fourth and two from the eight, quarterback Wally Maley sends three backs crashing into the line and then turns and follows. Maley goes all the way for the score as the Orangemen make the halftime tally 14 to seven with Penn State in the lead. Sophomore Maley continues to spark Syracuse in the third quarter. He keeps and skirts left end for a seven yard gain. On the next play, Don King bursts up the middle, gets a good block, and speeds on his way for a 35-yard touchdown. The kick is no good, so State still leads 14 to 13. Running his team like an established star, Wally Maley continues to baffle the Penn State defenders with his exceptional running. He just refuses to go down until he's gained 24 valuable yards to the Nittany Lion 30 as the third quarter ends. Watch in slow motion as Maley elects to take Syracuse to the air from the 16. He's rushed, but waits until he finds his man. Big Walt Sweeney has position in the end zone. Makes the touchdown catch as Syracuse leads for the first time, 19 to 14. The Lions rise to challenge. Lisk hits Roger Kaufman, and the state speedster battles for a 37-yard gain. On a key fourth down situation, Lisk goes back and bullets a strike to Dave Robinson for a clutch first down on the Syracuse one. Fullback Dave Hayes hits left tackle for the TD, and the Penn State team has its third touchdown and a narrow 20 to 19 lead. Syracuse refuses to quit and comes back on a melee to Sweeney completion. This puts the ball on the state 27 with 30 seconds left in the game. Syracuse kicker Tom Mingo lines up for the tiebreaker. There's the snap and the kick is blocked. 
and not until the final seconds does Penn State come up a winner over an aroused and improving Syracuse 11. The final score in a real thriller, Penn State 20, Syracuse 19. In a key battle between two evenly matched teams, Maryland and Penn State, both with six and one records, find it out at Beaver Stadium with an early November snowfall to make things tougher. Dick Shiner, the nation's top passer, really has a problem today as he loses the football in the snowstorm. Dave Robinson recovers for the Nittany Lions on the Terrapin 7. But it's snowing for both teams, and Roger Kaufman takes his turn losing the slippery pigskin. Fortunately for State, Terry Monahan is on the spot to recover for Rip Angle's 11. On fourth down, Ron Coates kicks up a storm of his own with a 26-yard field goal, and Penn State leads 3 to nothing after a quarter of mushing in the snow. The Terrapin attack has more success on the ground than through the air as Lynn Chiaverini grinds out eight yards. But Dick Shiner knows his lighter chirps can't push the lines around all day as he goes overhead with a pass to Joe Mona. Shiner rolls left, then throws a short pass to Ernie Aritzi, who makes it to the Penn State 10-yard line, and the Terrapins threaten. The Maryland quarterback comes back to the other side looking for an open receiver. Again, Ernie Aritzi makes the catch, and Coach Nugent's forces are camped on the Penn State one-foot line. Shiner doesn't take any chances of fumbling a handoff as he sneaks over, and Maryland shoves to the top, seven to three. Penn State's Pete Lisk knows how to carry the mail through the snow as he makes a seven yard run for it. Lisk gets a passing idea, but his receivers are covered. So he again puts his snowshoes into high gear. This time he picks up eight yards. The offense moving well on the ground. Lisk stays there. He keeps on this option play and rips into the end zone for a touchdown. Penn State takes over as King of the Mountain, 9-7 at halftime. Neither team could put together much of a drive until late in the third quarter when State's Dave Hayes breaks loose up the middle for 21 yards. Lisk tries his own number and finds he's still able to gain good yardage against the Terrapins as he rolls for another first down. The time is right, so Lisk drops back, plants himself, but waits too long to get rid of the ball. He's dropped as the quarter ends with Penn State hanging on to a 9-7 advantage. Maryland looks for a quick strike in the fourth quarter. But alert safety man, Don Calm, breaks up the play. Calm calmly pulls away from his blockers to lead the Maryland pack on a merry chase to the Terrapin 14-yard line, where it's first down, Penn State. Once in scoring position, Pete Lisk likes to run. He rolls out to his right, where there's plenty of room to roam. Lisk bangs his way over the goal line, and while the snowflakes continue to come down, the score keeps mounting. It's 15 to seven, Penn State. Maryland's Dick Shiner tries another aerial only to find Don Calm again intercepting for Penn State. His return to the Maryland 30 wipes out the Terrapin scoring threat. Penn State looks to score once more before it's all over. All-America candidate Roger Kaufman takes the lateral from Pete Lisk and heads for the corner of the end zone where he slides safely home to give the Nittany Lions another touchdown. It's 21 to seven as Penn State tries for the two-point conversion. Pete List finds Al Gursky behind his man in the end zone and hits him with the pass. It's more than enough as State snowballs the Maryland Terrapins 23 to seven 
and places Penn State back in the national picture as one of the country's outstanding football teams. Penn State's Nittany Lions, ranked ninth nationally, roll into Pitt Stadium for their annual battle with the Pitt Panthers. A Gator Bowl bid is in the offing for the Lions if they can top their bitter interstate rivals. Leading the state ground attack will be All-American Roger Kaufman. The 200-pound halfback possesses both power and speed and is a dangerous pass catcher. It's a nothing-to-nothing -nothing game as we pick up the action in the second quarter. Pittsburgh's Jim Trafficant fumbles, and State recovers on the Panther 30. Penn State gets five yards the hard way as Buddy Torres fumbles, and Gary Farkas pounces on the loose ball in the 25. The give is to Roger Kaufman, and Roger rocks the Panther defense for a first down. The Lions get to the 19, where the Panthers stiffen. Ron Coates goes for three points. Coates' boot is perfect, and State leads three to nothing as Santa Claus takes over to entertain the crowd at halftime. In the third quarter, the Nittany Lions are prowling for more points. Al Gursky grinds out an eight-yard gain. Dave Hayes hits right up the middle for 10 yards and a first down on the State 42. Penn State brings the 45,000 fans to their feet as Pete Lisk hits Roger Kaufman with a pass. Roger breaks down the sideline and goes all the way on a beautiful 56-yard scoring play. The conversion is good and State takes a 10 to nothing lead. Pittsburgh tries to come back later in the quarter. Paul Martha gets away for 18 yards. Jim Trafficant goes for the big yardage on the next play. His long aerial falls into alien hands as Junior Powell intercepts. Powell turns in one of the most exciting runs of the year. Fourth he goes with the Panthers in hot pursuit. Bob Sorochak finally catches all on the scene after a 48-yard return that covered a lot more yardage. On the first play of the fourth quarter, Pete Lisk rolls out and fires for the end zone. Al Gursky and Pitts' Ed Clark wrestle for the ball, but Gursky gets possession for the touchdown. It's now Penn State 16, Pitt nothing. Late in the game, Pittsburgh gets something going with sophomore quarterback Fred Masaryk at the trolls. Bill Howley latches on to Masaryk's pass for 14 yards. Masaryk goes to the other side this time, but the results are just as good. John Jenkins has it on the state 26. Masaryk looks to throw again, but his receivers are covered. Fred takes off on foot and makes it to the Lion 12. The Panthers are pushed back to the 16, but Masaryk gets it back with a nine-yard completion to John Mestizak. Masaryk tries to put the Panthers on the scoreboard with a pass intended for John Jenkins in the end zone. But Frank Sensick makes a beautiful save. Penn State rolls to a 16 to nothing victory over Pittsburgh to earn a bid to the Gator Bowl for the second straight year.